Hello everyone. Um, today I'm going to be going over how to add Switch games to your RetroPie. Now, this is how mine looks here. I'm using the pixel layout. And if you check it out here, it loads up and then I have to use a hotkey I created to make it full screen. So it's not a perfect solution, but it is probably the only solution out there that I know of so far. And so I'll just show you how it launches up here. I only have one game on it right now. It does take a little bit longer than my other computer because the computer I am using for this is a little bit slower. But as you can see, it is, uh, this is actually my sister's file. So you'll see, um, it is not me on this file. And then you can close it just like usual on any other emulator. Uh, before I go in, into anything, I want to show you, there is a very useful document on the RetroPie website that I followed for most of this. And then I had to do a little bit of my own work at the end. Uh, but if you want to add a new system, it walks you through a lot of what I am doing in this right here. And I'll try to remember to put this link in the description. And then I also want to say one other thing. Um, I will totally make more videos on RetroPie stuff if anyone wants me to. Um, I know it's not a huge thing a lot of people do, but I have had to go through a lot of difficult things to get my system working well, especially because it's not a actual Raspberry Pi system. I'm using an old laptop I bought from someone and then I kind of modeled it into a console and kind of ripped the guts out of it. So, um... I might have some experience in some weird areas, so just leave a comment for that. But now I'm going to get right into the video here. So first thing you're going to want to do, and I have a bunch of folders open to kind of go over this. I have this one right here, which is if you go into your computer, etc, and then emulation station, uh, it contains a file called es underscore systems dot config. Now you want to take this folder and copy it over to your computer, opt RetroPie, configs, all emulation station. If you copy it over here, uh, which I have already done, it'll show up right here, ES systems config. I can actually point because I'm not screen recording, which I'm not doing because I'm kind of just lazy if I'm being honest. <laughs> um, but yeah, so you copy that over there and this is what you'll edit. And so if you screw anything up, you can always go back to this older folder and replace it if like somehow you break RetroPie and you need to restart. Now, before you do anything on here, I should mention that make sure you back up um, all the config folders just in case anything happens. That would be this folder right over here. I want to mention something else. I'm using Yuzu and you can, I'm using an app image. So I'm sure there's ways to do it other other ways, but um, that's the way I'm doing it. I find it to be very easy in this. It's not like I did it on purpose. I didn't try the other way. So um, I won't go into detail how to download Yuzu and set that up. I'm just trying to integrate it into RetroPie. So to start off, now that we have moved the, or copied the ES systems config to the computer opt RetroPie configs all an emulation station folder, you want to open that up and edit these values. That was the wrong one. ES systems config right here. The way I set this up was that I copied uh, this one right here. It doesn't matter which one, but this, it starts with system and then I'll have whatever system. So this is ZX Spectrum. It might be Wii, might be something else. And I copied this over here and replaced all the values I had with new ones. So I, change the name to switch and then the full name I put Nintendo switch path. This is the path you want for the ROM. So whatever ROM folder you have for all your other uh, devices, you would make a new one. I named it switch uh, extensions. The one I'm using is dot NSP, but I do know there are other ones. I don't know them. I think XCI is one actually. So XCI is an extension used in switch emulation and there might be other ones. And so you can put all the extensions after that. The command line is very important. It basically is exactly the same as the other ones, 
but um, I changed whatever word is right here with switch. And that's just because I've been using switch for all the switch words on here. Uh, platform switch, theme switch, whatever words you use for these you want to remember for what happens later. But this stuff is already on the website. So you don't have to worry too much about this. I'm going to get more into detail with the stuff later. I recommend just following the website for this stuff. Once you have set these values incorrectly, that's where my insight hopefully can help some people out there. You set this up and when you launch RetroPie, hopefully it won't look like this, but you'll see something that's probably, actually I'll show you what it looks like. So let's just say you launch it up and you've added those things in it. It will look like this, or it may look something like, I'll show another example. Uh, here's one. Do you see how it shows switch? That was a bad example. I'll use uh, like this one. It just shows switch right there. And actually, there's another example. This one doesn't have a Wii setting um, or a switch setting. And so it'll just show black like that. But thankfully, I've created my own theme called Pixel Plus because I usually use the Pixel one. And then it looks like this. And so I will show you guys how to use that. To start out with the themes, I have this theme folder open here, which you can find going into your computer, ETC, emulation station, and themes. If you go through that path, you'll see all of the themes that you have downloaded. Now, I like the Pixel one, but you can do this to whatever one you want. Take that folder and copy it over to your computer, slash opt, retropie, configs, all, emulation station themes and you will find that you need to rename it because if you don't then it'll look the same when you're inside RetroPie. Now this is what you're going to edit and it will read this uh, from here instead of the other folder just like earlier when you switched the ES systems config over to the RetroPie folder. Same thing happens here. Now you go inside this folder and I recommend copying something. I copied GameCube but it can be whichever one you want. Um, I recommend just copying it, you know, control C, control V, and then rename the new one switch or whatever you'd like to name it. Then you're going to need to change the console.png and logo.png to your own images because it's going to be set to whatever it was. Mine was GameCube. So like this is my console PNG. This is my logo.png. And make sure they're transparent backgrounds, otherwise you may have some weird looking stuff in there. And then the theme.xml, you're gonna have to change a little bit. I changed, I kept mine almost exactly the same, except at the bottom it had some information about the GameCube, so I just switched those words into Switch ones. And I just said Nintendo Switch, uh, 2017, world's first hybrid console. Uh, you can do whatever you want for that, it doesn't really matter. Or you can just delete it and have it say nothing. Um, but that doesn't really matter. I just want to show you guys how you can switch change the themes pretty easily. I looked stuff up online and then just used a transparent background thing and then a pixelation thing to make it fit. You can edit them however you want, but it's not too complicated. So far, all I've gone over is the easy stuff, but now I'm going to go into the difficult stuff. So by now, hopefully you have the uh, themes figured out and you have the ES systems config file figured out. But now I'm going to go and show you how to get it to actually boot up. I mentioned briefly in the ES systems config that you need to go into the path and this goes to your ROMs. If you don't do this, then nothing will show up on RetroPie when you launch it. So in my example, I have RetroPie uh, ROMs and inside that path I was just talking about, I have Switch here and I put Pokemon Brilliant Diamond in it. 
and to show you that path there, um, ES systems config, like I said down here, home, RetroPie, ROMs, switch. And then uh, it should show up, as long as you have a game in there, it will show up even if the theme isn't set up yet, which I will show you how to do in a second. I am now going to start the hardest part of the video, and that is getting the emulator to run. So by this point, we should have the ES systems config already set up, although I'm going to leave it out because we may need to reference that in a little bit. So I'm going to keep this folder out here. Um, I do not believe I need the switch folder out. I don't think I need the themes folder out and I shouldn't need the other themes folder out. All right, so I have the emulators.config file, which you can find in computer opt RetroPie configs and then switch. So I'll open that up really quick. And this is what runs when you launch something up. Now, this won't actually be there. I It was kind of misleading how I started that this section, but that won't be there. You have to create it yourself. And this is being referenced, I believe, by the essystems.config file. I'm gonna go down and just double check that. It's already down here. Yeah, so this opt retropie supplementary run command run command dot uh, and then this zero sys switch percent ROM percent that's referencing this in a certain way. The run command that RetroPie uses goes through this file that you will be creating under switch. So the first thing I did was create the switch folder or whatever console you may be adding into um, RetroPie. And I just copied one from like ps2 or you could do something from wii i recommend copying one that isn't a uh, the retro arc one because the retro arc ones are all connected and have different settings so doing ps2 or wii should be very easy copying the config file like for example if i open up the wii one uh, it gives you some different settings here uh, and you copy it over and it's pretty simple and i'll show you what i have written in the switch one so I, I created the name one, which is switch, just like it may have said dolphin. Technically I might, uh, I probably should have switched this. I mean, I have it now, so I'm not going to change it, but this name should actually be Yuzu because that's how I'm running it. For example, if I added Ryujinx later or another emulator, then I'd probably name it Ryujinx or something. So this should technically be Yuzu and then default, I should switch that to Yuzu because default is whatever you have default. So like if I have, if I have three different settings, default is the one I want it to default to. Um, and so that would be switch equals or whatever it is equals blank. And then this is the folder path you use to open it. So I had some issues because my, this file right here used to be named Nintendo switch and it had a space in it and it was causing me issues. So, I find whenever I have issues with pathways, I just tend to make it, get rid of all the spaces and it tends to fix it. Um, because sometimes different operating systems run differently and I it was fine earlier with a different part of RetroPie with spaces. And then this one, you probably have to use um, a certain type of backslash to make it work. And I didn't want to mess with that. So if I go back here to home and then switch, I have yuzu.app image right here. Uh, you put all that with the quotes in it. And then at the very end, you put percent ROM percent. And so that opens it with the ROM you do. That was all I had to do here. And it should work and open this from RetroPie. But I do recommend getting all your settings in here beforehand. So for example, if you go to configure, uh, you know, for example, you need control. So whatever your main remote is, you're going to have to do here like this, so Xbox One controller. You can't plug in a different one. Like let's just say you decide to plug in a different remote later. I can't guarantee it'll work like that. Like, so my RetroPie, I have a guaranteed, I have a special remote that glows. That's always the master remote. So for example, um, we and GameCube games always have to have a, a specific remote tied to it. Whereas like some of the other games, it doesn't matter which remote you use. Uh, this one will work with some other Xbox One remotes, but you don't necessarily know, like sometimes it can be 
finicky about that. So I just recommend going through that. Um, and then it will not start on full screen for some reason. I'm not sure why it does that. Uh, maybe someone else can figure out how to do that. And then go to configure. And if you go to UI, I just went away from it. Hotkeys, sorry. Uh, I have two hotkeys in here. So I have the home and plus, which is the exit user. But whatever your uh, combo is, so I have a hotkey, which I make the home button, and then I make the plus, and you press that together, and it closes apps. So I do the same thing for exiting Yuzu on here, and then full screen, I did the same thing but minus, because for some reason, it won't start on full screen. I'm sure there's a way to do that. It's too much work for me to do it. If I see something else, I'll definitely change it, but I couldn't find out how to do that myself. And since it works, all from a controller that's what I mainly care about I don't want to have to like grab a keyboard and press f11 so this was enough it worked well enough for me and then there's one last thing I believe you need to do uh, confirm exit while emulation is running you need to turn that off otherwise you'll get a pop-up message then you have to grab a keyboard and press ok and you don't want to deal with that and I believe that's all the settings you need for this so um, and like I said, if some things you need to set up beforehand, it's like you get all your apps on here. Like you have five games on here, 10, 20, I don't really care. But what you're going to have to do, like if you have mods, you need to put the mods in beforehand. You can't do it from the other one. Or if you have updates, like I have, uh, this is, it won't say it here, but this is technically version 1.3. I'm not sure why it shows 0.6 on here. Um, and that was an update I have on here. And so you have to do the updates from here. And I can actually show you it's not you don't want them in the same folder so if I go back here if you have the updates in your ROMs folder then it will show up as a game and it won't launch properly so instead I put my my updates in the switch folder and then I put game updates just so it won't show up in RetroPie as a game so assuming you've gotten this to work you open up RetroPie and you go here, you have your theme stuff, like I've mentioned already. And if you do, I was actually able to um, scrape the information here. So I got the nice cover on it and you click it and it should launch like I showed you earlier. And then you just do the hotkey to make it full screen. So that should be it. And then you can do whatever you else you need to do to make this work. I hope this was helpful, everyone. Uh, like I said at the beginning, if you have any other questions for anything related to RetroPie, I may or may not know them, but if I do know them, uh, you can request I make another video on it and I'll try to put more effort. This one I, I'm recording super late and my camera died the first time, so everything was just a lot. I wasn't sure what I had already recorded yet. And like I said, it's super late, so um, I can go more in depth with some of this stuff if needed. Uh, I can go more into depth with like just a theme or more in depth with, you know, whatever it might be. I know I had some issues with the PlayStation 2 one. Um, I got that all working fine. So just let me know if there's anything else that you may need. And I hope you all have a great day.